Welcome to the Board Game Network. This is James. I'm going to be explaining how to play this game called Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. You are investigators and you are, your goal is to seal the four gates to prevent Cthulhu's awakening or the area being overrun by cultists and shoguths. Failure means unleashing an age of madness. You can lose several ways in this game. You can lose by Cthulhu Awakening, which he is this the seventh card here. You can lose by running out of cultists. Or not by running, by needing more cultists than what you have. You can uh, lose the game by running out of shoguts and needing, needing some that you don't have. You can lose by uh, needing player cards that you have run out of or if everybody, all the investigators are insane. The only way to win is to seal all four gates. So here I've got it set up for you. You have the old one card, you're just gonna, you, you are gonna put Cthulhu here as the seventh card and you're gonna mix up the others and deal them out randomly. The sixth cards here you are going to take your reference card. You are going to take your investigator cards, mix those up, deal two out, and the first player can draw one of those, and then you deal out another one, and the next player can pick between those two, and you keep doing that. So everybody has two to pick, pick one from the two that are out. Everybody gets four sanity tokens. Um, and then you're going to take your corresponding plastic figure that matches which investigator you are. There's a figure here for each investigator. Very nicely done. Um, you are going to take relics and you're going to put four, five, or six relics in your player deck based on if there's two, three, or four players. There are eleven cards of each. There's only four towns in this board and so there's 11 of each town. There's Arkham, Dunwich, Kingsport, and Innsmouth. 11 of each one in the deck. If you're playing the beginners game you're gonna have all 44 cards in here. To play the standard you're gonna take one of each town out. To play the expert you're gonna take two of each town out. And then you're going to shuffle your relic cards in here. And then you're going to deal out to the players. And you're going to deal either four, three, or two based on if there are two, three, or four players. There are also evil stirs cards. And once you've dealt out the cards to all your players, you're going to shuffle, you are going to split whatever's left of the deck. You're going to split it into four semi-equal pieces. You're going to shuffle the evil stirs into each of these four decks. So shuffle, 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 and then stack a deck from these. And then that's your player deck to draw from. And the rest of those relic cards, they just go face down over here in a relic deck. The ones that you didn't use and those relic cards are randomized. You are going to put these tokens that seal the gates. You're going to just set those there. You've got your die, your sanity die. You are going to take your summoning deck. You're going to shuffle that up you're going to flip up two cards and that's going to tell you two areas that you're going to put three cultists on and then you flip two more and you're going to put two cultists down on those two and then you're going to flip two more and you put one cultist down on those two. And then you draw a seventh card and you put a shogath out on that, on that town. 
The first player is the player who has read the most recently read a horror story. And here's what you do on your turn. You take four actions. You draw two cards from the player deck. So on your turn you do four actions. You draw two cards from the player deck to your hand and then you are going to flip up summoning cards and that's based on how many cards you flip up is based on this number down here. The summoning rate. So if this card's been flipped up, you're going to do two cards. But once you get to this one, once this one's flipped up, then you're going to go to three cards. So you either have two cards you flip up or three cards. And when you're flipping these up during the summoning, you need to watch for these little icons down here that show Shoguths on them. When there's a Shoguth on here, not only do cultists arrive on this territory, but the Shoguths actually move uh, towards an open gate. The gate has to be open towards the closest one. If there's two of them that are equal distance, then you just decide which one it's going towards. So let's talk about the actions that you can take, the four actions. Walking is one action, and that just means moving from one area to another area along the white lines. Taking a bus. Taking a bus happens at these uh, areas that have these buses. There's one per town and you discard a clue card from your hand at the bus station. You have to be at the bus station and if you discard the town you're in's card you can go to anywhere on the board. If you discard a card for where you want to go then you can go to that town. Anywhere in that town. So there's two different ways of discarding for the bus. You can use the gate you can move from one gate to another gate. These gates are kind of hard to see, but they've got the, the outer ring of them is either red, yellowish green, or green, or purple, whereas the, all the other areas are kind of a, a light gray outer ring. So you can move from one gate to another gate. And you don't have to discard any cards for that, but you do have to roll a sanity roll, and that's rolling this die. Now, there's two blank faces. Those are the only two good things on this die. The swirl means sanity, so you lose one of your sanity tokens, and you only start with four. There's one face that you lose two sanity tokens, and there's one that actually has two cultists show up in whatever area you're in. And when you're going from gate to gate, when you're um, using a gate, it has to be an open gate, cannot be sealed. You can give or take a clue or a relic card. You have to be in the same uh, area, the same area as another player to to trade or give a relic or take a relic card and to trade an area card or a town card you have to be in that town and in the same area as another player. To defeat a cultist you remove one cultist in the location you're in so you're taking an action you remove a cultist. To defeat a Shogath, <clears throat> you just have to be in that area and you remove the Shogath. However, it takes three actions. So you essentially you have to be there at the beginning of your turn or be one space away and move there and then take three actions to get rid of one of those. And moving into an area, if you're ever in an area with a Shogath, then you have to roll a Sanity Die. So if you move there or he moves to your space, you have to roll a die. And then you gain a relic card when you defeat the Shogath. And that's why you have these relic stacks over here. Sealing a gate, um, that's when you 
Uh, discard five of the same color card. You've got cards when you're drawing these things down here. You're just going to keep them and you just keep them face up. You've got four different colors here and you're just going to keep them. When you accum accumulate five of the same color, you can go to that gate and then discard those cards to seal the gate. And when you do that, you remove one cultist from every area in that town. So that's all the actions, the, all the different kinds of actions you can do. On the old ones, you need to watch for this infinity symbol down here at the bottom. If there's an infinity symbol on one of your old one cards, that means this uh, act, this, uh, this uh, whatever it tells you to do there, that is a permanent thing. So it stays in play for the rest of the game. Anytime you play a relic card out of your hand, whenever you play a relic card, you have to roll a sanity die to use it. And you do that at, when you're done playing this, the uh, relic card, whatever it does. And when you go insane, you actually flip your card to the back side that's a monochrome look. Up here, you'll notice you lose one action. You go from four actions to three actions and you lose an ability. This one says as an action move one cultist up to two locations and for two actions move one shogath up to one or one location and on the back it says as an action move up to two cultists one location each. So you have lost the movement ability of the shogath. And so you're going to have that flipped upside down. And uh, sealing a gate cures the investigator from his insanity. And if that happens, you get your four sanity tokens again to start over. You are transported either to the hospital or the church. So you wake up there and have no idea what happened and then you immediately get your one action back on the same turn that you did your cure or your uh, sealing the gate but then you permanently get it back because you flip this back over so that you get your four actions. So when you draw and you pick up an evil stirs card here's the different things that happen during the evil stirs card. First thing, fight the madness. You have to do a die roll and then apply the sanity, whatever it tells you you do. The second thing is, is you reveal an old one card. So whatever, whichever the next one is to be revealed, you flip it over and you do whatever it says to do here immediately. And then you continue on with step three. And it says, draw one card from the bottom of the summoning deck flip it up and you put a shogath on the board at that location. So here's the theater, it's in the red area and you can have shogaths in there with cultists. The cultists regroup so you shuffle the summoning discard deck, put those cards back up on top and then you continue on with your turn where you flip up based on whatever your summoning rate is. So that all pretty much plays just like regular Pandemic except for the die roll. So anytime during the game that there are three cultists in an area and you draw that card there is no outbreak like there is in Pandemic, but what, they, what you do do is you flip over the next old one card. And then that's just the same as if you would draw your Evil Stirs card. Same kind of thing. So, tough, tough game. Tough to win with all the, with the, uh, the sanity checking and it's very easy to lose by everybody going insane. So remember your only way to win is to seal all four gates 
in the four towns and the ways you lose is by Cthulhu showing up, by needing a cultist that you have run out of cultists and you need an extra one, if you have run out of Shogas and there's only three in the game and you've run out of those, you've run out of player cards in your deck and you need to draw one or if everybody's insane. So that's how you play Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. Make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network.